After the disappointment that was A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, New Line Cinema was at a crossroads. It was becoming apparent to them that maybe audiences wanted to take a break from Freddy Krueger. So with that being the case, New Line was open for business, taking pitches for what they were billing as the final A Nightmare on Elm Street film. Though I don't think anybody at the time actually believed this would truly be the end of Freddy Krueger, it was at least going to be the end for a while. And one of the first people that they were interested in to bring on for the next Nightmare on Elm Street movie was none other than Peter Jackson. See, Peter Jackson had built a reputation for himself with New Line Cinema after bad taste, and New Line gave him a shot at the future of the franchise. So Peter Jackson and his writing partner, Danny Mulheron, wrote a script, a script that they called A Nightmare on Elm Street 6, The Dream Lover. See, Jackson and Mulheron wanted to switch things up a little bit. They didn't want to keep doing what the previous five films had done. You know, teenagers are afraid to go to sleep because Freddy Krueger is haunting their dreams and wants to kill them one by one. They took a more meta approach to their script. And in the idea of their script was, the teenagers of Springwood aren't scared anymore. They don't fear Freddy Krueger. They enjoy their dreams. They enjoy the limitless possibilities that the dream world provides to them, and all of us as humans. Who doesn't love to have good dreams? But they even took it a step further. The teenagers in Springwood, Ohio, were actively taking sleeping pills so they could go into the dream world and bully Freddy Krueger. Yes, you heard that correctly. They wanted to go to sleep so they could see Freddy in their dreams and belittle him? Now, years later, we would see Freddy vs. Jason kind of tackle the idea that Freddy Krueger needs to bring fear back to the teenagers of Springwood, Ohio. Not too dissimilar from what Peter Jackson's original conceit was for this film. Freddy Krueger doesn't scare anyone anymore. Now, as Jackson's idea went, Freddy Krueger would eventually break that cycle. See, these kids going into the dream world and wreaking havoc on Freddy and almost taking it back as theirs was going to go too far, and one of the teenagers was going to be killed by Freddy. Details are slim on exactly how, but that's what was going to happen. And once that happened, people would actually start to fear Freddy Krueger again. See, it's no secret throughout the franchise that if you kind of make Freddy out of sight, out of mind, a lot of people think he's no longer a threat. But once a kill happens, once the threat is very real and present, everybody starts thinking of the dream demon. And once that happens, he gains power. And the last thing you need is Freddy Krueger being powerful, confident, and invading your dreams. That's how the dream lover was going to go. The idea continued with Freddy Krueger trapping a police officer in the dream world. And this police officer's son, a teenager from Springwood, would have to go into the dream world to save him from Freddy Krueger. Now, eventually the son would succeed and the son and the police officer would leave the dream world and Freddy Krueger would be defeated. And that was the basic idea for Peter Jackson's dream lover. Now, I have always liked the idea in Freddy vs. Jason that Freddy needed to bring fear back to Springwood, Ohio so he could go back on his killing sprees and be top dog. I always liked that. So the dream lover taking elements of that more than 10 years prior is really cool and maybe that's where some of it came from though it is an idea that a nightmare on elm street has toyed with time and time again though never fully committed to until freddy versus jason the idea of these teenagers almost taking the power back and making the dream world theirs is a cool idea using it to beat up on freddy krueger at the beginning of the movie that's kind of cartoony so it would have been nice to see Freddy get the upper hand again and turn the dream world into a hellscape and make it his domain truly once again. There's a lot to like about this idea, just at its base level. There's also a lot to not like. While details are scarce on the minutia of this idea that Jackson had, I think we can all agree that it would have definitely been an interesting direction for the franchise to take. Now, it seems as though New Line Cinema wasn't interested in this approach because Peter Jackson was going full reboot, and New Line didn't want to do that. They were trying to wrap this up definitively, at least for a while. And if Peter Jackson's movie had become a hit and had been well-received, especially with the fan base, they would have probably pumped out sequels after that. 
you would have never seen the franchise go on the trajectory that it went. Freddy's dead selling it at the end, and just a couple years later, Wes Craven wanting to come back to resurrect it. Some people might say, why well, I'd rather this have happened, because I don't like New Nightmare, or I don't like Freddy's dead. Fair enough, but who's to say that where this path would have eventually led would have been all that successful? Nobody's to know. Things happen the way they do for a reason. At the end of the day, Peter Jackson writing and directing and a Nightmare on Elm Street film is a really cool idea. Though we'll never know what that could have been like on screen, it wasn't meant to be. New Line would go a different direction, and the rest is history. But while we sit and wait for a new A Nightmare on Elm Street film to come out, we can sit back and wonder, what if some of these sequels had happened?